Hello, today we're going to talk about reactivity 3.3.1, um, and it's all about radicals or free radicals. So radicals are any species that have an unpaired electron. They tend to be very, very reactive because of that unpaired electron. And they can come in a couple different forms. You could have atomic radicals. So things like uh, atomic, um, let's do iodine, atomic iodine. Iodine is a halogen, has seven valence electrons. So the valence shell has one unpaired electron in it that makes it a free radical. Um, they could also be molecular. So things like um, nitrogen monoxide is a free radical. Um, you could have a hydroxyl radical where it doesn't have the negative charge, um, giving it a paired electron, so just a single electron there. You could also have a methyl radical. You could have anionic forms of free radicals. Um, so things like superoxide, which is kind of cool. Superoxide has a negative charge because it has that extra electron. Um, this is a what we call reactive oxygen species. Um, very, very reactive, um, and it's the target of sometimes when we talk about antioxidants, it's very frequently talking about things that are reactive oxygen species like superoxide. They could also be in cationic forms. Um, so they have positive charges, and the best example I have of this are molecular ions. Um, so something like C3H8. Um, when you're going to do mass, spectro mass spectroscopy, excuse me, you have to take your organic compound and turn it into an ion. And we do that by removing an electron. So that, for the most part, will create those molecular ions that are positive with a single unpaired electron. OK, so we have um, a chlorine. Chlorine dioxide molecule has an unpaired electron on the chlorine atom. Draw the Lewis formula of the ClO2. So I want to use my um, rules for Lewis structures. I need to add up the valence electrons. There are seven valence electrons from chlorine and 12 valence electrons from the two oxygens. So I have 19 total. We're going to put chlorine in the middle and the oxygens on the outside. And so those two bonds just used up four of those valence electrons. Then I want to fill up the octets of the outside atoms. So that made, um, that just used up 12 electrons and I have three left over. I'm going to put the three on that central chlorine atom. So then you need to minimize formal charges by turning lone pairs into double bonds. So right now, each oxygen has a negative one formal charge, and the chlorine has a positive two formal charge. So I can minimize that by changing um, the lone pair into a double bond. So bringing this down to plus one and oxygen's at zero. And I can do it again with the other oxygen, changing a lone pair to a double bond, bringing both of them down to zero. So this is your Lewis structure. Um, all of them have zero formal charges, uh, but it is still a very reactive um, molecule because of that uh, lone electron, unpaired electron on the chlorine. And for this one, the Lewis formula of a bromine atom. Um, bromine is a halogen, seven valence electrons. Typically, I tell my students to just go in a circle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. So we can see that there is one unpaired electron for that bromine atom free radical. And this topic links to structure 2.1. How is it possible for a radical to be an atom, a molecule, a cation, or an anion? Um, so, and I said to consider examples of each type. We've looked at many in this um, presentation already, but um, if it is an atom, that means it doesn't have a charge, right? It's a neutral atom. It's going to have um, an odd number of valence electrons. If you have a molecule that is a free radical, somehow you're probably going to have an uh, uneven number of total valence electrons for the entire molecule. 
um, for a cation, um, typically they're going to be losing one electron, like in the formation of a molecular ion. Or if it's an anion, sometimes they can gain a single electron, making um, all of them have a single unpaired electron.